I love Bach, and the chorale that you just heard is my favorite piece, my or favorite organ piece. And you can say that I met Bach in space, another astronaut story. This time it was in space with Andrei Tarkovsky in the 1972. And I was circling as a viewer and an 11-year-old boy with an Earth crew around the planet called Solaris. And there was a moment, a very touching moment of connection between two worlds. And this was the chorale that was played then. Fast forward 10 years. I was 21 and in college following physics. It was my way of pursuing my dream of being an astronaut. And at some point, I was so excited. I said, wow, new possibilities in thinking. And then there was a moment in which I was called to a meeting, having about half the people that are here today to, with an objective, and the faculty of physics lined up here. And someone for the Communist Party came in and said, Dan Mokanu is an enemy of the Communist establishment. We need to throw him out of the university. I could not believe it. Why? Because I dared to go into meditation and yoga. I dared to explore new territories. So at that moment, I hit a, this was a major crisis for me. My family was also falling apart. So it was a moment where I asked myself, if I die tomorrow, what is really important to me? And what I found out was it was music. It was playing the pipe organ. And when I was an 11-year-old boy, I told myself, if I could play only one piece, if there was only one thing that I could play on the pipe organ, it would be the chorale you just heard. So I went to my soon-to-be organ teacher, and I said, Miss Lydia, if I die tomorrow, my biggest regret is not playing the pipe organ. So she looked at me and she said, do you play piano? I replied, no. Do you play any instrument? I replied, no. Do you know how to read music? I replied, no. So she looked at me, well, I knew, to, the truth is, I knew how to read a line, the baritone line, which is the easiest in a, in a choir. So she looked at me and she said, OK, I will teach you and you'll play well. And what happened was that in only three weeks, I was able to play on an instrument. Yes. I was able to play on the pipe organ, an instrument as complex as this one, I was able to assemble the chorale that you just heard at the beginning. So one hand is on the top manual, and the left hand is on the lower manual, and the feet have to play on all the pedals that you see down below. This was an extraordinary feat, from nothing, from impossible to possible in only three weeks. And Fast forward nowadays, as a coach and as a consultant, my thing is to I work with organizations and people to really empower performance and to make potentials realized. And as I was practicing, I realized, my God, everybody is looking for the same thing, is looking for performance, and music has it. Music has cracked the code for performance 500 years ago. I asked Professor Stroe, what is music? And he said, then you are at the gates of music, when what you see, you can hear, and what you hear, you can see. What he meant was this, you are at the gates of music, you can play music, when you as a composer can visualize how your vision gets in action. And you are also a performer when, when you see you can actually hear and you can play. So this was what it looked like, the operating system for music. And this was done 500 years ago. Wow. I did a bit of researching to see what happened around the 1500s. So when this system was realized, when vision and action were actually one, I'm not going to get into the details of what you see there, but the little fingers that you see, the five, the three, the four, the two, and the one, are actually 
the number of the fingers of the hand. So that's my implementation. But it was the question how, what happened around the 1500 was that really it was a music boom because the operating system was ready, uh, lots of composers showed up, just like today, on iOS or Android, lots, there are millions and millions of applications. Why? Because it's a great, these are great operating systems that enabled creativity and enabled applications. You could think of Bach as an application. He was able to create Bach apps. So, at the same time, Violins were invented and cellos, which we take for granted today. It was just because the operating system was solid enough for creation and mastery. So how did this all start? Imagine yourself that you are a thousand years ago and that you are studying music. And if you look at the artists of the time, music was really in the church or in the ecclesiastic space. So to become a Gregorian monk or a chanter, an artist of the day, you had to practice about 10 years to master your craft. And there is someone, Guido d'Arezzo, here you see it as Guido Monaco, because he was actually exiled to the city of Arezzo, and you'll see why, who actually managed to get down from 10 years of practice to only one to become a master singer. So what he did was actually looks very simple. His question was, what gets played? Music, the whole operating system of music answers four questions. Who plays, what note, how long, and when? They sound like trivial questions, right? But it took 500 years to solve them. And he, what he did is he invented the middle two lines in the stave. So actually, the monks could, act, could place the notes better. It was a clear way to place the notes. So what was, really, what was the impact of having this is a tremendous increase in productivity. Ten times. So, so get down from ten years to one year is phenomenal. So in the 1500, what happened was not just the innovation in music and an abundance of composers, but really, the first pocket watch was invented about at the same time. Why? Because time became relevant. Time became important for people. A few years later, a frame to build socks was built, and it's really pegged as the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Well, what's really the Industrial Revolution about? It's about more, better, faster. It's about productivity. So I come back to music and I ask you, okay, so what does this have to do with performance in business? Anything, any vision that you want to create, any vision that you want to realize has to do with performance. Think of it when you go to a job interview. If you get the job interview, that means you performed well. If you hit your bottom line at, uh, at, in your company, that means you performed well. If you didn't, that means you didn't perform well. So, how we are kind of like the troubad corporate troubadours. So those of us who work in companies, we are like corporate troubadours, and what do, we, what do we do all day long? We sing our instruments, mandolins, we do keyboarding, we produce wonderful documents, then we have uh, dance acts, we go in meetings and you present things, and you have uh, clients' uh, auditions in the companies, outside the companies, then we go and meet clients, and we have performances all over the place. So, how are you doing in business with performance? If we look in music, how many times do you worry when you see, when you hear music, or you see a musician, oh my God, is he going to hit the notes? Oh my God, does he know, is the piece complete? When you go to a concert, how many of you have been to bad concerts because the music was played really badly? Not very few, very few hands. Yes, because music has created a system for performance that begins at 100%. Which means there is no question the performer who is a professional in music can perform at 100%.
What I have seen in business and in the world is that performance in the corporations and organizations, people hope to get to 100%. And to give you an idea, the chorale that I just played for you, it was about 40 seconds of music, it was the beginning of the chorale. It has 180 notes, the ones that I played. Imagine a 90% performance. How many of you would be very happy if you'd have 90% performance in your, in your career as individuals or as companies? Probably many, I don't know, <laughs> I can't see your hands. But 90% performance means 20 notes being off in 40 seconds. 20 opportunities to not play the music. That is unbearable. You wouldn't, you wouldn't go to that concert. And if we go to 95%, it would be only nine notes. Okay, great. If we go to 99%, it would be only two notes. But you know what? Music is designed for 100%. And it did that when? 500 years ago. So, what would be the closest bridge? How can we connect the performance that we are all looking in business and professional lives and in personal lives with music? The question would be, what is the music sheet? What is the operating system that leads to the music sheet? And it sounds very simple, but see here Bach didn't say, whoever is going to play this piece will have to practice 10 hours a day, it will have to go to such school and such schools of music, it will have to have such and such instrument, it will have to do that. None of that is captured in the music sheet. So how, much, how many things would get much simpler if we'd have an operating system for performance that could work across industries? It doesn't matter what industry you are in, you could go from zero to performance in a fraction of the time it took you to go in the usual way. I'm not saying that companies and organizations don't have performance systems. They all do. But they're all boutique designs and safely guarded secrets. What if we create an open source system, operating system for performance, in which basically we can create the music sheet that will be very clear for anyone, whether it's in marketing or in sales or in uh, public relations or in productions or manufacturing, it doesn't matter. What it would be possible if we'll have no barriers to actually start something that we don't know? What would be possible to really get in our dreams and go from impossibility to possibility in a fraction of time. Of course, it takes mastery, and there is a journey to mastery, but there is something between not being able to, impossible to possible. And the closest someone came to a music sheet is Gantt. And Gantt created what's called Gantt chart. It's named after him. And what Gantt did here was to really have activities planned out and activity over time. You can see that there is a moment when they start and there a moment when they end, and there is a duration for them, and we can label them. But, to but is this a music sheet? No, it's not yet a music sheet, because you can't see the performers if you have to dig down to have another Gantt chart to see what notes are actually being played, what are the notes that are being played. So, but, and still, a great result came out of this, the Hoover Dam. That was a huge success for this, for his approach. But how are you doing today if we look at the instruments that we have for performance? We have to-do lists. Are they music sheets? Probably not. Why? Because they don't, they don't have the time component. How many of the to-do lists you know how long they take and when you are going to start them and who is going to do them and it's very specific what keys you are going to play on the instrument that you play. Because we play as voice singers, we play as composers and we play as producers. We set the stage for performance. So what would be possible if such a system would be available to all across industries, across company sizes, across fields, across roles in a company? What would be possible if we just take what music has created already? What will happen is it will be a space for creation. 
will be more freedom to create and to master any craft. So this is a beginning endeavor. I'm working on it and I have developed my future now to developing this system. And the question is, will you join me in crafting this system? Thank you.